Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's the 2025 Chevy Silverado, but more specifically this one is a ZR2, so we're now in the fourth model year of the ZR2 nameplate on the Silverado. This one specifically is in a color called Red Hot, this one specifically has the baby sized Duramax diesel under the hood, and this is the most off-road capable Chevy truck that you can buy off the showroom floor. So today I get to share the good, the bad, and the ugly of this brand new ZR2 Silverado to help you guys at home decide if this might be the right vehicle for you. So you can expect to see a walk around, all the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 on GPS, and then my final thoughts and huge thanks to Twin Falls Chevy for letting me borrow this one for the day. I'll link them below if you're interested because they sell below MSRP and they ship all over the country. And with that said, let's dive right into this review. But if you are new to the Chevy Silverado, there's actually a lot that you should probably know. First of all, that nameplate came out back in 1999. So this generation of Silverado is technically the fourth generation that came out in 2019. So we're now in the seventh model year of this generation, the fourth generation of the Silverado, which is technically the fifth generation of the Sierra. Although they're practically identical minus a few bits of interior and exterior design language changing, it's basically just when the nameplates came about. So Chevy sells around a half million of these every single year in the North American market. They sell maybe a quarter million or so of the GMC counterparts, which if you add all those numbers up, they're pretty close to how many F-150s are sold because this is the second most popular truck to the F-150. And if you are in the North American market where I am, these are assembled in either Indiana or Michigan. And just like Silverados of the past, they do offer quite a lot of capability, durability, and long lasting expectations out of these trucks. This generation is a five-star crash test rated vehicle. That doesn't mean it scores high in every category, but overall, it's about as safe as a Silverado has ever been. This one being a high trim level, it has a lot of extra adaptive safety features, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, heads up display, 360 cameras all around that you can have on while you're driving, and a lot of braking features front and back for pedestrian and cars. So basically, even though it is five-star crash test rated, it has a lot of safety features, but you're still gonna want to avoid accidents, even though you're in a big lifted Chevy Silverado truck. And while these are the largest and the safest that the Silverado has ever been, it's also unfortunately the most expensive. Even a regular cab, short bed, work truck Silverado with vinyl floors, is gonna MSRP for about $39,000. And that's for a tool drive version. There are actually five trim levels or five configurations of bed size to cab size. So this one specifically is basically the representation of the most common Silverado these days. It's the full-size cab, the crew cab, with the short bed, which is about five and a half feet. So although the proportions are good, you have a lot more interior volume than I think you have for bed space. So, and this being the off-road truck version, it might not be the most capable for towing and payload, but you're gonna see those numbers in just a second. This is basically the, the ideal poster image of what a Silverado looks like these days and where this is the highest trim level, the nine out of nine highest trim levels, it starts at around $72,000, which is thankfully only up about $500 more than last year. This one only has a few extra options and goodies and destination, and then after a little bit of a discount that's already mentioned on the sticker, it's about a $74,000 truck, and that's a lot of money for a Chevy Silverado, or quite frankly, anything else in today's economy. So while this is a very fun truck to drive, as you're gonna see shortly, it's a little bit inconvenient to park. This is an average parking space, and yet you can see it barely fits. That's because it's about 19.3 feet long. Thankfully, the wheelbase is just under 12 feet, so it is planted and stable on the road, but with a full-size truck, even being a lifted off-road variation of it, you don't have a great breakover angle, so some of the off-road aspects of this are not maybe as good as you might think. It is about seven feet wide, six and a half feet tall, the bed earlier I said is five and a half feet. Technically it's five and three quarters or around 68 inches. This one with the three liter Duramax diesel actually has a better payload than the 6.2 liter V8. This one has a 1421 payload. So say you have a thousand pounds of five 200 pound passengers in the cab, you can still fit 400 pounds of payload in the bed. Cause keep in mind that number is for the cabin and the bed. So the off-road suspension of this definitely takes away from the payload capacity. And then this one seems like it can tow about 9,000 pounds. It has 11.2 inches of ground clearance, a kind of fuel efficient focus 323 final drive ratio, about 32 and a half degrees of approach angle, which is very impressive for this type of truck. And that's partially due to how the bumper is designed. And then it can do a full circle in about 47 feet. 
The last few things to mention out here is the gas door is thankfully located on the driver's side of the truck. This though, unfortunately, does not lock. So even when you lock the vehicle, the bums can attempt to siphon, in this case, some of your diesel fuel, depending on which of those five configurations of cab size to bed you have. The Silverado offers a 24 to 30 gallon gas tank, but when you're in a diesel ZR2 like this, you're gonna get about 20 city, about 23 highway, which in my time with this truck, I can confirm that is about accurate. And some of you guys who have this three liter diesel in a non-lifted version, you guys have even commented before that you get about 30 on the highway, which is fantastic, especially when the 6.2 Ecotec V8 version of this only gets around 14 city, 20 on the highway. And then it has a 33 inch Goodyear Wrangler tire. It's a 275, 70, 18. I actually really like the wheel on these and it even has about 15, 30 seconds of tread depth. So it is not shaved down at all. You can also see while we're back here, the Moldomatic shocks, and it does have leaf springs and a solid axle with a front and a rear locking differential. So when you put this in locking front and rear, you basically have full-time four-wheel drive and it's probably just about unstoppable. But this is your key. You have lock, unlock, remote start, tailgate drop, and panic button. But you thankfully can leave this in your pocket because you do have proximity key features right here to lock and unlock the vehicle and they work very quickly. The driver's side door panel of this Silverado basically has about as nice materials as you're gonna find on one of these other than maybe an LTZ high country type of trim level. You have some lunar moon landing surface. You have kind of a carbon fiber type of theme. Actually, there's quite a few different materials, but they all are soft touch, comfortable. You don't have the upper storage tray, but you do have a nice handle, Bose speakers, ZR2 on the door sill with a nice running board that I've actually been needing to use for most of my time getting in and out of this vehicle. You have a pretty good all weather mat that goes up the side of the transmission tunnel decently. You have the OBD2 port, the hood release. You have all of your options right here. Thankfully, this one also has four wheel drive auto, which I really like. You can adjust your heads up display, ventilation, uh, windshield or high beam stock and your, uh, what are these things called? You have your wipers right there. And then this is kind of like a StarTex leather type of synthetic seat. It's heated, it's ventilated, it feels really good. The bolstering is just enough that I think most people are really gonna like this. And Chevy invests a lot of money in having comfortable seats because that's one of the places you're gonna be spending the most time in your Silverado. And then you have a sedan size power moonroof up top. Sitting inside here, you'll notice the huge ZR2 graphic, the dual screens. You have a heated leather wrapped steering wheel, the horn. It's about fairly high pitch, fairly loud. Paddle shifters on the back. It's comfortable, you have good visibility. You can see the heads up display comes out right there. And when we fire it up with the push button start, the diesel comes to life. Sounds really good. You have a lot of information through the center display. You have adaptive cruise control settings on the left, voice and volume on the right, and then you can go through everything on the center display. There's quite a bit of information in there, which I appreciate. And then just sitting in here, it's really a nice place to be because you have the six o'clock handle. You have some storage up here. You have a bunch of technology in this one. And as we go through the, the screen, uh, you can kind of get the basic idea, trailering, phone setup, navigation, music. But I like to put the cameras on, especially when I drive because Chevy cameras, high quality. They're pretty cool. I like them a lot. Otherwise, you have some of your safety features right there. You do have auto start stop. If you don't like that, you can drop the tailgate, hazard lights, traction control, hill descent, rear locker, front and rear locker. That's why you buy a ZR2. It's for the crazy off-road capability. You have a trailer brake, ventilated, heated seats, all of your climate controls, USB and C style, tons of storage, tons of cup holder storage, pencil storage, post-it storage, wireless charging, and a nice big lifty tray with, with a few more outlets and a household style outlet right there that even has the prong for the ground. Otherwise you have garage door settings. You can slide and move the sunroof around. And when you mess around with this, it does slide. And is there lighting? Um, I'm not sure why it's not turned on. Oh, there it is. It was just a little bit delayed. Kind of interesting. But with that said, let's turn it off and we'll hop in the back. The back of the Silverado, the door panel basically looks all the same. You're just missing a few of the controls. Still have a huge pocket, nice upgraded Bose speaker, and the huge seat, which back here, it kind of feels like you're sitting in the living room. You do have hidden storage on each side. I do wish that was more hidden. It's obviously a cutout right there, even if you sh uh, tuck in the strap. You know, you can really tell it's back there, and it doesn't really go very far, like past the middle seat or anything. And then you should be able to just lift up the 40 and the 60 split. Lots of storage down here, probably some tire changing tools on that side. And then when we hop inside here, that was kind of stuck. It's probably just needing to be used a few times on the spray new truck. 
you have that much room in front of your knees. I'm five foot 11, super comfortable. There's a cutout right here, so you have several inches above your head. You also have some cup holders, ventilation, heated seats, some plugins, and a beefy center armrest, which again, is kind of stiff because it's solid. It feels like it's brand new and it's gonna be durable for a long time. Otherwise, sitting back here is really a pretty nice place to be, and I'd be okay to drive across the country from the back of a Silverado ZR2. The back of this ZR2, I think looks really nice, and I'm in love with the fact that it doesn't have the silly Multimatic tailgate and all that extra technology and stuff that you just don't need in an off-road truck So we drop it. It's dampened. You do have a bed liner in this one It's about 70 inches wide, which is basically six feet But if you go from the wheel wells, it's about 50 inches So keep that in mind for how much storage you have it's roughly 22 inches tall all those tie downs You have three on each corner. They're maybe hard to see in the shadows but they are rated for 500 pounds. And overall, this one has a little bit over 60 cubic feet of cargo capacity back here. And let's see how the tailgate feels to lift. One of the lightest ones in the business. So keep in mind, payload is 1400 pounds, but that is after you subtract all the weight on the interior of the cabin, you get to that number. And some nice black door handles with the proximity key features right there, which I again, really appreciate. Otherwise, you're not really gonna find anything new on the door panel. You even have power seats, again, heated, ventilated for the front. My backpack is enjoying its position in this truck. You have some storage on the side of the transmission tunnel and the upper glove box, which is more hidden than the back seat storage. Locking, because you have a key in the remote that's hidden away if you ever need it. And then not a huge glove box, but it's big enough with all the other storage that you get in this full size truck. So with that said, let's come around to the front. I'll pop the hood and I'll show you what the three liter baby Duramax diesel looks like. Under the hood, you have this baby size Duramax diesel. It's a three liter. The turbo is right there on the exhaust bank. The intake side ultimately is on the other side. You have your battery, your fuse box. You have reservoirs. It looks like mostly on the driver's side, your induction, air filter, windshield washer fluid. There's actually quite a bit of room to work on this. I'd imagine like a lot of diesels, especially the Duramaxes, it should be pretty reliable. And then where this really comes with a heavy punch is in its torque. 495 pounds at a low RPM and 305 horsepower. So these numbers are actually not a ton higher than the 2.7 liter Turbomax four-cylinder engine, but this does make more torque than any of the other Chevy Silverados offered for 2025, at least in the 1500 or half ton configuration. So overall, it sounds cool. Seems to be a very punchy, very throaty little turbo engine and getting over 20 miles per gallon in a truck on 33 inch tires that looks like this. I really can't complain about that. But with that said, let's drop the hood, take it for a drive. Initial driving impressions of the 2025 ZR2 Silverado. So it's been a while since I've been in this big of a truck. Currently I do have traction off. It is in sport mode and it feels pretty decent for having about 500 pound feet of torque. Even though it's turning these big 33 inch tires, I'm still pretty impressed with this truck overall. Visibility, just like all the other Silverados, it's overall pretty good. Thankfully the side mirrors from the factory are actually large enough that you can see out of them decently well. You have the big handle right here to grab and pull yourself up. And then you have a lot of technology, especially when you're spending about $74,000 like this one. You have the huge screen right here, the 13.4 inch screen right here, the digital display for the rear view camera, keep it steering wheel paddle shifters for the 10 speed, and a lot of other creature comforts that just make this a nice riding vehicle. Currently going about 50 miles an hour down the a pretty well paved highway, if we're being honest, and it's extremely smooth. The trees aren't dancing around a lot, so there's not a lot of wind outside. I could imagine on a windy day with, you know, almost a foot of ground clearance, you're gonna get a lot of road noise. But on this one today, sounds pretty mild. These Goodyear Wrangler tires with a lot of tread depth really aren't kicking up any rocks, which I appreciate. And listening to that diesel engine, you're not gonna hear it as well on camera as I can hear it in person, but especially at low speeds when there's not as much road and wind noise, you can really hear the engine, you can hear the turbo spool just a little bit. So for being factory regulated and you know not very open of a system, it really does a good job and it's just a nice place to be. This isn't the fastest truck. I've done a zero to 60 comparison of all the engines before and this was not the winner. But is it enough power? Yeah, getting over 20 miles per gallon, even in the city, or even since restarting it a little while ago, having a lot of idle time and still getting 20.4, I'm pretty impressed with what these diesel three liter baby Duramax Silverados can do. There's a little bit of a bump right here. Let's see if we even notice it. Oh yeah, we still noticed it. But the DSSV suspension, 
really does a good job. Heated wheel feels warm. The heated seats feel a little bit, a little bit less impressive than I was expecting. But overall, this is a smooth riding truck and I like it a lot. I definitely think you should test drive one for yourself if you're interested in this. And for being the highest trim level of the Chevy Silverado, I'm not really that surprised. But anyways, guys, let's get to the private road. We'll do a zero to 60 and then we'll wrap this video up. Zero to 60 in the three liter Duramax CR2. It's in sport mode, four wheel drive auto. I'll do a little bit of a brake drive. Let's see what it can do. Not too bad and true, zero to 60. Came in at 7.86 seconds. My final thoughts of the 2025 Chevy Duramax ZR2. It's a really good truck. It's really expensive. It has a bold front fascia, a big hood, some aggressive, you know, features, the flow tie, the almost like the Viper cut. It really stands out from the crowd. It looks a lot more aggressive than most other trucks. But if you buy this over something like, say, the $50,000 more basic Trail Boss, you know, custom Silverado, the third highest trim level, or the third lowest, I should say, are you gonna use it for its capabilities? Are you just gonna buy it for the, you know, driving around the pavement parking lots and princessing it around? I don't know. If you're not gonna use it for its purpose, you might wanna save some money and get a different trim level, but you could also compare this to the Ram Rebel or the RHO if you want the higher output version of what is now, you know, no longer the T-Rex, or if you want the Ford Tremor. This kind of competes right in the territory of all those vehicles. I like this a lot. But most people that I know, they don't buy a $75,000 truck to beat on off-road. They buy it because they like it. So buy this because you like it, but test drive the competition. Test drive all the other off-road focus full-size trucks. Test drive the regular Silverado. I just want to make sure that future you is making a very informed decision and you're not just buying it based off of the curb appeal, which this has in abundance. This really does make a statement. It looks fantastic, but it is a very pricey truck and I don't know how these hold their value. Anyways, guys, the dealership, Twin Falls Chevy, they're one of the best in the nation. I highly recommend them. So if you want any Silverado or any other vehicle, definitely check them out. Otherwise, if you got anything out of this video, please consider liking this video. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. Make sure that you buy what you've test driven, what you're happy with, and what you're going to enjoy for a long time. Because cars are expensive, but cars are fun. And this truck was very fun to drive for the day. And I don't have any concerns with it other than the price tag. So with that said, I wish you guys the best. Hope you take care and until next time, see ya.